In this video, I'm going to talk about cell division. There are really three types of cell division in nature. There is uh, binary fission in prokaryotic bacteria, and there's two types of cell division in eukaryotes, mitosis and meiosis. In this video, I'm really only going to talk about binary fission and mitosis because both of them uh, aim to create exact copies of the original cell. Uh, we'll save meiosis for a different video. So um, why would you want to make copy cells as an organism? Well, uh, in multicellular organisms like us, um, that's how we grow. Uh, remember that we did an activity that said that, that when organisms grow, their cells don't become bigger. Instead, we sort of make new cells and we sort of gradually grow when we become composed of more and more tiny cells rather than making cells actually larger. Uh, maybe I'm done growing as an adult, but I might still be making copy cells to repair the ones that have been damaged or just maybe to replace ones that have been lost. If you think about maybe making a cut, uh, if there's a cut in your skin, um, then literally um, cells around it are replacing the ones that have been lost. Um, and then there are actually some organisms, not us, who can use copying cell division to actually make clones um, for offspring and make new organisms. Um, in reproduction, but again, that doesn't include us. So um, let's start with binary fission, um, uh, the, the prokaryotic cell division first. Um, that's kind of considered a simpler cell division because as it turns out, prokaryotic bacteria only have one piece of, of DNA. Um, whenever we talk about cell division, really the goal is going to be to think about how we distribute the DNA to the new cells so that they have the instructions for building all their protein workers. And so uh, since uh, uh, bacteria only have one little piece of DNA, it's a pretty easy process to copy it and then distribute it to the new cells and then just to split the cells up. And so we just kind of call that type of cell division binary fission. Binary, we're trying to make two, and fission, we're really just splitting up uh, the one cell into two cells. Now eukaryotic mitosis is a little bit more complicated because eukaryotes have more than one piece of DNA in their nucleus. Um, this is just an example of maybe human DNA. Um, in our body cells, we have 46 total different separate pieces of DNA. Um, we have, they tend to come in pairs because we get one set from mom, one set from dad. And so um, all 46 of those different separate pieces have different genetic information in them. And so um, in, in order to make a copy of a eukaryotic human cell, there has to be a much more organized process to make sure that we copy and distribute all 46 of those different pieces correctly. Um, otherwise, there'll be serious problems when a cell doesn't have a whole gigantic piece of information to read. And so um, let's think about then the overall process of eukaryotic cell division. Um, sometimes we like to call it the cell cycle overall because when cells finish this process, they can go back and repeat it. So that's kind of that cycle or circular idea. So uh, maybe there's one cell that, that decides it needs to undergo this process. Uh, maybe it starts out in a little uh, uh, step we call interphase. And in fact, even cells that aren't dividing um, stay in interphase. And so actually of these three steps, it's by far the longest of the three steps. Um, and even though we're kind of probably talking about it the least. Um, in interphase, maybe cells are just doing lots of things to prepare for the future steps of cell division. Maybe they're making proteins from the DNA code um, that need to be made specially for this process. And the most important thing we really want to emphasize about interphase is where the DNA gets copied. Um, as it turns out, this is where the DNA is still unpacked and you can't access the code um, unless it's unpacked to be able to copy it. So you have to copy it first. Then in the mitosis proper step, we can actually pack up the DNA and I'll talk about the name of that in just a minute. And then you can line them up once you pack them up all efficiently and you can split them up. And then the final step, cytokinesis, um, looks like a big word. Cyto typically means cell. Kinesis kind of has that root word um, K-I-N for movement. Um, and so really all we're doing is we're moving the cells apart, we're splitting up the cells um, to create separate cells. Okay, um, so let's just think about um, a few more terms and then we'll kind of put all this together in proper sequence. Uh, we want to think about how the DNA really exists in two different forms throughout this process. Really unpacked, um, what I was describing before during interphase, 
Um, so that would be uh, what we call the chromatin form. Um, and sometimes I usually like to uh, use the rhyming association thin chromatin. Um, it's really thinly spread out throughout the nucleus and it's unpacked so that cells can access the code and read it to make proteins or they can read it to copy it as it turns out too. Um, but maybe during um, the parts where we're actually trying to split up the DNA equally, we want to pack it up into a more condensed form. Just like how you like to pack up your things in a suitcase maybe when you travel um, somewhere else. And so we call that condensed form a chromosome. Um, and, and there are kind of two different ways to think about chromosomes. Um, sometimes they look like they're in an X shape, and sometimes they look like they're kind of in uh, linear rods, like over here, kind of like a straight line. Um, and really the only difference between them is that they exist in that X temporarily, uh, because uh, uh, what cells do is when they copy the DNA before it's packed up, they actually tie the copies together in that X, and then they line them up to split them up. It's, it's maybe a good idea to line up the exact, or, or put the exact copies in an X, because then you can guarantee that when you split them up, you're sending one copy to one cell and the other copy to the other cell. And so that's just the idea there. So now that we've kind of uh, uh, defined some terms, let's just kind of walk through the whole process. Let's pretend that there's some eukaryotic organism out there with eight total pieces of DNA in their cell. Uh, and we can think of that as maybe four pairs because they got one set from dad, one set from mom. And so I've kind of color coded everything here. And let's just walk through the process of going through the whole cell cycle. So remember that maybe early on in interphase, lots of things are happening, um, but maybe the most important thing that's happening is that we're copying all the DNA, and we're tying those exact copies together. Um, the only thing that I would suggest is remember how I said that in interphase, the DNA is still in thin chromatin form. It's just kind of hard for me to show that here, so I'm just showing you the X's. But technically, those X's don't appear until the next step, early mitosis where we actually start to see the chromosomes in that condensed X form because all the DNA got packed up. So technically here's where we first see them. Uh, maybe in later steps of mitosis we start to organize them. So as it turns out um, there are little motor proteins within the uh, chromosomes that can start to kind of uh, line them up. And here in mitosis at least we're going to line them up in one straight line like this. We'll see that that's very different in meiosis later. Um, as it turns out, there are also little proteins called spindle fibers that are being generated by another organelle that are sort of at both sides of the cell. And those little spindle fibers will connect to each little set of uh, uh, chromosomes on both sides. So I'm not gonna draw every single one of them out. Um, but essentially those serve as little tracks for the motor proteins inside the chromosomes to be able to walk along. Um, as it turns out, the strings, the spindle fibers don't pull um, the chromosomes apart. They're little proteins inside that walk the chromosome copies apart. And so this is where the exact copies finally get split up and they go to each separate cell. So maybe something like that. And then once we've successfully split the, all the copies up, we can finish with cytokinesis where we actually sp split the entire cells up. And notice what we have. We have two cells that have eight total pieces of DNA, just like the initial cell we started with. So um, again, all we're trying to see here is that in mitosis, we make exact copies of what we start with. Um, if we start with one cell, then we get two cells that are genetically identical to the original cell. Remember that this is a cycle, so that those cells might go back to interphase. All their little chromosomes will unpack back to the chromatin form. And if they need to divide again, then they might go through the process again. That might be pretty common um, early in the development of an organism. Think about a little human um, starting off as one cell and doing lots and lots and lots and lots of cell division to eventually make a fetus. Um, uh, that's eventually born, and then they'll continue to do lots and lots and lots of cell division to grow from there. Okay, so, um, but the last thing I want to say is that it's really important that the body control mitosis because mitosis is expensive. It requires a lot of resources to build an entire copy of all the DNA. It requires a lot of energy and amino acids to make new proteins that are needed just for cell division. So you're really spending a lot of resources and a lot of ATP to do mitosis. 
And so if cells um, just kind of divide out of control, that can be a medical problem called cancer. Cancer can be a problem because obviously if those cells are continuing to divide out of control, there are more and more of them and then they all continue dividing. But it can really be a health problem because mitosis is expensive. And if those cells are sort of hogging all of the resources of the body, then eventually it can cause medical problems when your healthy cells no longer get the nucleotides and the amino acids and the ATP that they need. So um, just to kind of finish, we talked about how binary fission in prokaryotes is a little different from mitosis in eukaryotes, even though they both make exact copies of the initial cell. We really focused on eukaryotic mitosis after that, talking about three steps. Interphase, where DNA is copied. Mitosis, where the DNA is organized, lined up, and split up. And cytokinesis, where the cells are split up. And just the brief idea that mitosis is something that your body generally controls um, when cells are healthy.